We open on Lister cooking some meat. Steak? What is it, pork? I found a deep freeze down on B deck next to Crichton's quarters. Notice that Cat can't identify it, though that doesn't stop him from stealing it. Catch you later. Maybe needs a little more soy sauce. Ow! This is gonna come up again later. Later, Lister is reading a book. I love the title, The Most Influential Humans. It sounds like it was written by a robot or an alien or something. Anyway, he gets to a bit about Shakespeare. Plays, poems, and a whole bunch of expressions. A dish fit for a king, that was Shakespeare. What a great expression. In a pickle? That was another Shakespeare expression, in a pickle? That's also gonna come up later. And how is that relevant to our non-pickly lives here in deep space today? When will people learn, Shakespeare, it's over! Rimmer's view on him has changed a lot since Marooned. It's the only copy of probably the greatest work in English literature. Toodle Pip King Lear, Farewell Macbeth, Bye Bye Hamlet. Not that he could quote him anyway. Now! <laughs> That's all I can remember. Anyway, there's been a delivery. It's a rejuvenation shower. It rewinds each individual's genome and returns the body to any point in its past. But they have to assemble it, and the directions are in Swedish. With just an Allen key and a Phillips screwdriver, assembly should take less than three hours. That's Swedish for a week. Cue this really silly montage of them trying to figure out what the parts even are. Katz is pretty good, but Crichton's is my favorite. Good old Ikea gags. And here's the final product. I love how parts of it are duct taped together. What about all these spare parts we didn't use? What the hell's an alignment bracket? Lister wants to test it by putting something organic inside, so... Something teeming with life. Oh, sir, what about your socks? Stand back, everyone, they're coming through. Unfortunately, the beams hit outside instead and end up teleporting them somewhere. I fear we may have time traveled, sirs. I told you those white plastic clippy things were important. Maybe I should have done a counter on the instances of time travel in this series. It might be even higher than the number of times they've mentioned Peterson. Nah. We're in a land called Albion, sir. It's better known as Britain. And the year is 23 AD. When Britain's all nutters back then. Fighting, vomiting and passing out. A phase that doesn't end anytime soon, sir. Zing. But it turns out that the remote isn't Does working. It Does it need a battery by any chance? Eight volts, about yay big? It's easy to miss, but we actually saw Lister throwing out that battery earlier. We'll make a battery. A potato, a copper coin, and an iron nail. We can make a one volt battery. Make eight, connect them up, we've got eight volts. Go Rimmer. I like how this implies that he's not dumb, he's just a bad test taker. But potatoes hadn't yet been discovered in Britain, so they'll have to go with lemons, where the closest ones are in India. If we walk briskly, we'll get there in six months. Six months? Let's face it, sir, we're in a real pickle. And here come the Shakespeare quotes. I love their disguises. They find a lady who speaks English. Where they were sacrificed to the three gods, then the druids drank their blood and ate their meat and said that the harvest would be bountiful. She's kind of fun. Right, have you got any lemons? Anyway, she's selling lemons. Wow, they're so happy they hugged Rimmer. We've walked 4,000 miles. How many do you want? Eight. Walked across half the known world for eight lemons. Have you got a bag? It's a bag. Bags haven't been invented yet, sir. I'm not sure I believe that. How hard is it to think of making bags out of cheap cloth? Anyway, now they've got their lemons. They just need copper. Isn't Britain famous for its copper? I said we needed a shopping list. Didn't I say we need a list? Turns out Lister has some. Now they just need nails, which ends up taking a couple more weeks. But there they are. In 23 AD, they still believed the Earth was flat. They're getting an interesting history lesson here. Purple is a luxury item. It's made from crushed seashells, and only the very rich can afford it. Really? Jesus! <laughs> yes? Also, there's Jesus. 23 AD, this is when he was supposed to be alive. He toured the world, perfecting his teachings. Rimmer is dying to talk to him. Look, it'll be fine. We'll get talking, I'll tell him my middle name's Judas. Yeah, that'd be a great way to break the ice. Also, we finally get into why Rimmer's middle name is Judas. Judas embodied all the traits my mum wanted me to have. Your mum wanted you to be a two-faced, double-crossing, conniving snitch. <laughs> she must have been very proud of you. She was a member of the Church of Judas. I thought she was a Seventh-day Advent hoppist. They believed that every Sunday should be spent hopping. They believed that Jesus asked Judas to swap places with him. 
So Judas was crucified and Jesus was able to show up the following Monday and say, I'm back, baby, I'm back. But yeah, that's an interesting take on it. Judas's full name was James Judas Didymus. James means twin, Didymus means twin. Judas was Jesus's twin bro. So what happened to Jesus afterwards? He went to the south of France with Mary Magdalene, had a family and invented the wheelbarrow. It wouldn't surprise me if that was a conspiracy theory that some people actually believed. Oh boy, here he comes. I fear thou art impatient for thine food. Please, join me. What an honor. Big, big fan of yours. Big, big fan. Rimmer is why we can't have nice things. Would the gladiator like to join us too? That's kind of cute that Jesus apparently thinks that Crichton is just a guy in armor. Be most honored, sir, although I am not a gladiator. I am a man of peace. Oh, then thou shalt sit next to me. He's all, Senpai noticed me, sirs. Meanwhile, Lister is just like, this is not going to end well. <laughs> I love this show. A dish fit for a king! This is almost as bad as the moose incident. Mine enemies are many. Anyway, some Roman soldiers come after Jesus, so they all help him get to a hiding place. With how Red Dwarf is filmed, I'll bet this was one really small set that they just ran through several times from different angles. Anyway, they hide in some kind of storage room where they plan to hook up the battery and go back to Red Dwarf. Take HC with us! Well, we can't leave him here, sir. You'd think that after the JFK incident, they would have learned not to mess with history. Leave me. I must face thine enemies alone. I have no fear of death. Stick with me, kid. You'll soon change. These two are just polar opposites. We need wire. I'll use my finger. Looks as if I've smoked some bark from an acacia tree. Bad bark. Well, bad bark. Heh, <laughs> Jesus is funny. It stores energy, sir. Anyway, Crichton explains what a battery is. Or to simplify, the copper coin, which is a ductile metal with high thermal and electrical conductivity. He's trying so hard to follow all of this. All from the lemon. Interesting. I, I have but one question. What's a lemon? Never meet your heroes. Anyway, they managed to get out of there just barely in time. Lemons truly are an amazing fruit. Later on, Jesus learns about how amazing the future is. You can store any object into its strange cloth walls and then carry these objects any... I, I'm dizzied by its genius. Jesus is easily impressed. Anyway, Jesus has been experiencing some pain. Lister, have you given Jesus a vindaloo? <sighs> Excuse me. I love how he takes his bag with him. Anyway, Crichton suspects that it could be a kidney stone. So Crichton is going to operate on him because that's a thing he can do, apparently. Well, sir, you remember that stomach pain you had a few months ago? Yeah. And remember how that just sort of stopped? Yeah. Well, that's because I performed a splenectomy on you, sir. Well, where is it? I might need that. It's with the rest of your organs, in the freezer, <laughs> next to my quarters, on B-Day. And there's the payoff for that opening scene. Excuse me. Cat definitely got his comeuppance for stealing Lister's food. Well, we need to insert a laser up his urethra, locate the stone, and haul it out. Crichton, the only urethra I know is Urethra Franklin. Urethra Franklin should be the name of a porn star. But yeah, once he realizes what Crichton is planning to do, he's a bit uncomfortable with it. But sir, it's a perfectly standard operation. Yeah, that's because you're not a member of the Schneiber Hauser Club. <laughs> Sometimes he is, and it's pretty impressive. I thought we'd run out of anesthetic. Who needs anesthetic? Just tell him what you're going to do, he'll faint on the spot. I'm curious how they got Jesus to agree to being operated on, but either way, this awkward scene happens. Oh, someone's got to hold it while I insert the camera. I'll hold it. This is the high point of my entire career. The sad part is that's probably true. Need anything to do, just holler. There's some books on the table if you get bored, computer games, feel free. Just a bag. Jesus loves his bag. A little later... Mr. Jesus? Ooh, he hath risen. I wonder how long Crichton has been holding on to that one. Jesus is missing, but he left a note. Who was the idiot who let him read a history book? Didn't it occur to you that him reading about how many wars Christianity's caused might mess him up a bit? Basically, he's gone back to his own time to trash his own reputation. So this Christianity thingeth never taketh off -th 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 -th. What about Christmas? We've killed Wallace and Gromit. I mean, you'd probably still have the same Christmas specials. They'd just be called Winter Solstice specials and Linus would make a speech about Frigga or something. How can he do that? Well, breaking the Ten Commandments might be a pretty good place to start. Anyway, cut to what Jesus is up to and it's pretty amazing. And then my mind will turn to dark, vile thoughts and I'll start coveting my neighbor's oxen. And when I finish coveting things, I might make a small statue out of wood and, and, and idolize it a bit. 
Jesus is dropping all the hot takes. I mean, it's almost as if a man made up these commandments to keep a primitive people in check. The Dwarfers eventually catch up with him. You want to fight then, doth thou? No. Don't think that just because I'm a man of peace, I can't punch your teeth out. Oh god, Lister's gonna fight Jesus. I guess it makes sense that Jesus wouldn't fight very well. So Lister tries to convince Jesus to do the right thing. I can't believe I just uttered that sentence. You make a lot of people happy. I mean, look at me. I presumed that throughout history, all famous people were amazing. And that I met you. In fact, you're a bit of a knob, just like me. I don't want to walk down the street and have people say, oh, look, there's the Jesus of Caesarea, the guy who caused all the wars. Oops, twist. Turns out that this is some other Jesus. Son of Rachel the Fornicator, Samuel the Chicken Stealer. He stole them, not me. Take it up with him. I'm always having a leg up because of him. So those Roman soldiers came after him in the beginning because his dad stole chickens? That's hilarious. Is Jesus quite a popular name around here? Yeah, there's a few of us. There's about 70 of us at the last census. Does this mean I'm not the son of God? <clears throat> oh, bugger. Sorry, buddy, you're not going to get tortured and nailed to a cross after all. But Lister has some words of advice. You've had a little trip to the future. Take what you've learned and do something with it. Get your bugs! Way to go, Jesus. I wonder if it's his descendants who opened up the first JC Pennies. So Lister is taking advantage of being in India and having one more curry before they go back and... Jesus. Table for two. My brother booked it maybe in his name. Judas. Holy crap, Rimmer's mom was right! Rimmer, sit down! And so ends Lemons. This is definitely one of my favorite Season 10 episodes. Like I've said, Season 10 is mostly comedy, which is fine because it nails it. But I always like it when Red Dwarf hits us with a bit of unexpected depth. And in this case, it forces you to consider what Jesus would think if he knew about the darker parts of Christianity that happened after his death. It's played for laughs, of course, but it still makes you think. And then, of course, it's balanced out by Lister pointing out that it was only some people who did that stuff, implying that not all Christians are bad. So the episode doesn't come across as anti-Christian. Maybe it does at first, but then the positives are brought in. Like I said, it balances out in my opinion. Either way, I love that they meet Jesus and he's kind of an idiot. He's definitely a lovable idiot though. Seriously, he was a lot of fun. I'm surprised that this episode didn't inspire a new kind of what would Jesus do meme. Then again, they kind of cover their asses with the reveal that this wasn't the same Jesus after all. But the first time I saw this episode, my response was a string of reactions along the lines of, Oh my god, I can't believe they did that. I'm guessing being critical of Christianity is less frowned upon in the UK than it is in America. I would imagine that primetime sitcoms in America wouldn't touch this subject with a 10-foot pole. I could be wrong, though. But anyway, I like that we finally get an explanation for Rimmer's middle name. Technically, we didn't need one, it was just rule of funny, but the reasoning behind it is interesting. I kind of like that whole Church of Judas concept. Again, I don't know if anyone actually believes that, but it wouldn't surprise me if someone did. Well, I guess that's all I have to say about Lemons. It's a fun episode that throws in a little bit of depth, and I love it when Red Dwarf does that. Next up is Entangled. See you then. According to the second commandment, he wipe out all your descendants. Isn't that breaking the sixth commandment? Thou shalt not kill? It's not killing, it's genocide. I think that's okay. 